People don't know what those black police officers did to our family. And they really don't know what they did to their own families. They have put their own families in harm's way. They have brought shame to their own families. They brought shame to the black community. Yeah, shame hurt your family, hurting the black community. Because obviously, when you have police officers who are black, there is a certain expectation in the black community that there's a deeper understanding. You know, not that black officers have to put their lives on the line. I mean, I know routine traffic stops can turn into something violent for a law enforcement officer. It has happened. So we we fully admit that. But that was not the case with Tyrese. That was not the case in that moment. And so mm-hmm. when his mother says the shame to the black community, the, sh- the hurt and shame to their individual families, I mean, the fact that she even had the emotional uh, outlet in this time of grief for her to even even think about their families, but she is absolutely right. So this tragic situation has many dynamics attached to it. Uh, Tyree's murder is yet another reminder of the viciousness or death sentence prevalent within the legal system from the streets. Meaning when somebody encounters a law enforcement officer all the way to the courts. None of the, no, no pillars of the legal system, it, it goes unscathed here. And you know what, Lady Justice ain't blind, but she see black people just fine. Mm. It is a reminder that being black or brown or, or being a person of color and even being poor from any walk of life, being a, and, and you know, so, let me let me step back. What I want to say about this is that it is a reminder in terms of the the statement I made earlier. These officers are black, and sometimes people think that if it's a black officer, is if it's a brown officer, if it's another an officer of another color, if or ethnic group, and if it's a woman, that somehow they're above it all, not recognizing that there is a culture within law enforcement and that people who are law enforcement officers are certainly socialized in the same society that we are. So it doesn't matter many times that they are black or brown or a woman. It doesn't matter sometimes because they have the same outlook on black people as everybody else or poor people as anybody else. If there is no a, a philosophical foundation attached to those identity traits, they mean absolutely nothing. Case in point, what just mm-hmm. happened to Tyree? Mm-hmm. So where is the so-called Blue Lives, Blue, Blue Lives Matter groups? Bishop Talbert Swan raises some very important questions that we must grapple with in terms of now what is happening to these black officers and those white supremacist types who just always jump to the, to the side of law enforcement no matter what no matter what the evidence shows no matter what but they're not out here now let's put up the bishop's tweet and it's just again something to think about the bishop is not justifying in any way what these five black police officers did at all he's just giving us some other food for thought so it took 2 weeks for five black memphis police officers to be fired and charged in the murder of Tyree Nichols if only white officers that constantly brutalize abuse and murder black people were held accountable in this like manner in other words step up your game in the other cases not justifying it but just putting out some important points and then the bishop goes further to make other important points that we have to think about. Notice that no white person is on here defending the cops that killed Tyree Nichols and saying he should have complied. Why do you think that is? Okay, a very good point. Again, not defending these officers, but like, hey, if they were white officers, that is what these folks would, some of these folks would be saying. Why do you think? We know why, because the officers are black. And then the last point that the bishop has made that I think is important. Dear black cops, don't get it twisted. The system that protects white police officers from prosecution and being held accountable when they brutalize and murder black people doesn't work the same way for you. And again, he's not saying he wants it to work that way. He's just making a point here, three very important points that we must grapple with both as a black community and as a larger society in the United States 
of America. Francesca, I mean, you know, I, I think the bishop hit the nail on the head on all three of those points. I, I need to underscore bold and underline. He's yes. not justifying what those black officers did. He's just showing that there are different standards for different people. Absolutely, and it's great and it's important. And this is the thing about racism is that it really what we're talking about is a system of white supremacy and it is very depersonal. I mean, it is it behaves differently and affects people differently if you are black in this system. However, it's important to say that yes, black officers can be agents and tools of a white supremacist police policing system. It doesn't mean that they're individually racist, right? It means that they are serving a broader system that is structurally designed to treat black bodies and black people like they are inhuman, like they are not actually deserving of their basic human rights met, like they're always going to be criminals, like like their their only crime is basically existing. And so it is important and look, man, we know police across this country are having a hard time recruiting, right? They have a really, really hard time recruiting for for folks to fill their ranks. And look at this now, where you see like, okay, white officers getting off with the same kind of brutality, black officers, not so much. How's that gonna do for recruitment? I mean, again, that shouldn't be a sticking point for you to join the cop, like the police force. But look at look, and and you want to bet, Nina? Want to bet the amount of let's not cross the thin blue line that happens inside of police forces, where crazy kinds of you know whether it's microaggressions or overt racism happens to black cops, and they don't say anything because the bigger crime is supposedly you know calling out your fellow officer, right? Yeah, yeah, French. I mean, I'm ready to leap out of my seat. All of that stuff, like all of the dynamics. And, you know, I have law enforcement officers in my family. You know, my millennial son is in law enforcement. And it's it's a hard, brutal job at times. I worry about him all the time. He could have been on either side of that. Right. You know, in terms of being a, a black man in America and being a millennial and, and walking around and, and not necessarily being as safe because of the skin that he's in. You know, the urban poet Ice Cube said, you know, my in a, in a lyric, my skin is my sin. That tends to be the case for black people overwhelmingly when you think about a system. And another point that you made, Francesca, people need to understand this. When we talk about systemic racism and bigotry, the point that you made about black officers or brown officers or women can imitate that same oppressive system that they are not somehow different than unless they deconstruct their construction. That's why I said there has to be a philosophical awakening tied to being black, tied to being brown, tied to being a person of color, tied to being a woman. If in fact you are in law enforcement, if it is just that identity, which is your racial or ethnic makeup or your gender makeup, that's not enough. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the communities that you serve? Mm-hmm. Protect and serve is on the outside of most police cars, but law enforcement in this country, from its inception to the very moment, they don't protect and serve. The, the goal is not necessarily protect and serve. And I'm not talking about individual officers, but I'm saying sy- systemically, it has been to control black communities. And why is that? Because law enforcement officers are not separate and apart from a racial, from the racial dynamics of this country, from the white supremacy and anti-black nature of this country. And yes, are there some law enforcement officers that are enlightened, that come with a philosophical foundation that understands that protect and serve means all people? Absolutely, absolutely. That is absolutely true. Can there be racism and bigotry and anti-blackness in any profession? Absolutely. Is Mm -hmm. there? Absolutely, no doubt about it. But when you have a badge and a gun, there is an extra dynamic because you have the power of life or death in your hands. Mm -hmm. There has to be a different dynamic to that. So then it is not enough to be black, like your identity, that, that phenotype identity is extra. But you gotta come to the table loving the community. You know, Francesca, the last mayor of the city of Cleveland, Mayor Frank G. Jackson, one of the best mayors in of this city, um, once said, he says it all the time, and I love to quote him. He said, You can't serve that which you do not love. Mm. And you gotta have a kind of love and reverence for people. Now, if law enforcement officers' lives are really in danger, which they are, many a day, 
Don't get it twisted. Francesca and I are not saying that many a day. But that day was not the day. Yeah. And we cannot continue to justify a system from the streets to the courts that treat black people differently. And racism is a power dynamic. So although those black officers were mimicking that and what they did to Tyree, they themselves are not racist. Because we're talking about a white supremacy network that black people or other people of color can mimic. Because I don't want none of that mess about, because people, Francesca, they don't understand what racism really, really is. It's not about an individual bigotry. It is about social, political, economic power structures. Yes. But the right deliberately misunderstands that, like yeah. right, like that's it. It helps them because they're all they see is bad apples. They only see individuals, and every time you talk about racism, they're like, "Well, I'm not. I didn't say the N word personally." Right. And you're like, and they use that against for honestly small minded people who don't understand that it isn't personal. It isn't about them. It isn't about me and my ancestors. And what do you have got wrong about my? I I'm white. You know, don't don't be mad at me. No, no, it's not about you, baby. It's That's about it. something way bigger and broader and the right deliberately makes sure that its audience never understands what racism truly is, mm-hmm. which is exactly like you're saying about systems of power. Systems of power and I want to recommend a book. Its title is How to Be Less Stupid About Race, Dr. <laughs> Crystal Fleming. Folks, just it's simple. Just go on to get that book, it'll help you out. So now and finally, you know, Francesca and I just want all of you to know that we can't lose sight of who this moment is really about. Yes, there are lessons, so many lessons that we can learn and actions to be taken because of this tragic tragic incident. Ultimately, all roads lead back to what happened to 29 year old Tyree Nichols, a black man, a son, a father, and a friend. He enjoyed skateboarding and photography. Take a look at this. He was murdered. We're all gonna get to see that video today. Um, His mother is aching, his family is aching and guess what? His child will be without their father for something that did not, absolutely did not have to happen. 